Hello everyone, thank you for coming back to the show. We are joined again for the first time in seven months with Zachary King. Uh, if you don't know who Zachary is, there is two videos on the channel a few months back where we had over three hours of his generous time. He's told us of his past life in the dark world of Satanism, the Church of Satan, and shared many, many amazing insights to the other side of what's happening around us and we don't even believe it. We don't believe what we see or what we hear coming from media or anything else. So I've invited him back just to maybe give us a little bit more insight of his knowledge of his past life to understand why things are crumbling about the Hollywood scenes and society in general perhaps, but also something else. We are approaching the annual festivities, if you want to call it, of Halloween. And as all, it was all back in historic cases of All Hallows' Eve, even further back to the Celts before the Romans came, and then Christianity after that, making it the night before All Saints' Day. So we hit November, we know it's the month of Holy Souls, and we start with All Saints' Day. But what is Halloween turned into now with all the spooky stuff? All the haunted game boards I'm seeing on the supermarkets to tarot card gifts and everything else in between. It's all about the spooky, the fearful, the evil. Is there anything to it? Is it all innocent? Well, that's why Zachary's here to discuss it a little bit more. So, Zachary, I just want to say thank you very much again for coming back on the show. Can't believe it's been seven months already. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. And yeah, seven months just flew by. <laughs> well, I could see a good bit of beer coming back there after a few months, so yeah. I'm going to try it, see what happens. <laughs> so, Zachary, you did give us, like I was saying there at the introduction, you gave us so much stuff, I had to split it into two long videos on the channel. You went into great detail of your past life, which isn't an easy thing maybe to share although I know you've been doing it for so much uh, time now, ever since that lady put the miraculous medal in your hand, you instantly mm -hmm. had your mystical experiences in Our Lady and the Lord appeared to you. And since then, you've converted, you've turned your life, your faith, everything around for the good, and now he's using you in a, a very special and unique way, I would have to say. So for everyone wanting to see all that, the cards will pop up at the end of this video to check them out. But in the meantime, Zachary, before we get into this type of topic, I might just ask, uh, would you be happy to lead us in a short prayer? Okay, what you want? Anything at all, a prayer of protection and guidance with the Holy Spirit would be fine. <laughs> um, usually, to me, the strongest prayer we have is the Hail Mary. Yeah, let's go for it. All right. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thanks very much, Zachary. And I should say, people, if you don't hear it already in my throat, that both of us have a little cough sweet in the mouth. I've also got a hot lem sip for now as we're fighting off this cold. But we wanted to get this video done in time before Halloween. And thanks again for coming on in such short notice, Zachary. Sure. Maybe start with the Halloween side of things because I did look up a little bit for probably the first time to see a little bit what about Halloween all is. And it seems to be going back to the Celtic lands of the UK, which, surprise, surprise, I'm not totally surprised with uh, the history of Scotland, at least. But then it was the Romans, and then it was the Christians, and it all seems to have evolved, all to do with the afterlife, the dead, and then coming into a new year. So I was just saying, what, what, as much as it's meant to come across as a holy way, what's actually happening? Should we be alarmed about what's going on, or is it an innocent thing for kids to have fun and have loads of candy? Well, you know, it, it, it's we consider it a Catholic holiday, and like 
everything else, say, Satan likes to mock and pervert. You know, like we have the Divine Mercy Hour, which is at 3 p.m., you know, where we pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. You know, so how can he mock that? He makes the Devil's Hour at 3 a.m. You know, it's the same type thing. I mean, you can get up at 3 a.m. if you want and still pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. There's nothing that says you can't. But Satan likes to claim that hour for himself. You know, and, you know, all the hours belong to God. So just keep doing a godly thing. Um, Halloween, my kids are allowed to dress up, but they're not allowed to wear something scary. You know, one of my daughters wanted to be Freddy Krueger. I'm like, that's a serial killer. No, you know, that's not what you're going to be. You know, and, you know, I think my son wanted to be Darth Vader, which I'm okay with. Um, one of my girls is going to be a lifeguard. And I don't know if my oldest one is going to dress up at all. But we don't take them trick-or-treating. Uh, two churches we go to have trick or trunk. So they have candy in the, the trunk or the boot of the car. And you go up there with your costume and they give you like handfuls of candy. It's a lot more candy than you would get if you went door to door. But one of the problems here in the United States is that we have a fear of fentanyl being put in the candy. Right. And, you know, and it, and it goes back to kids being poisoned or razor blades and apples, things like that. I mean, th those things never happened. But you know, the, the poison candy was a relative that poisoned their own kids. But, you know, we still have that fear here in America that that can happen. And fentanyl goes in so much stuff that, you know, we have the fear that somebody will put it in kids' candy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have, um, the, 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 I think one of the dangers of Halloween is that people think it is just child's play and it doesn't matter what my child dresses as. But if your child is doing something demonic or trying to dress demonic, why wouldn't a demon say, well, He's open to looking like me. Maybe he'd be okay if I hung out with him. Maybe he'd be okay if I attached to him. Maybe he'd be okay if I went home with him. Right. So we should definitely be on our guard with it then, I suppose, because even when you hear some exorcist priests speaking about different stories, even Father Chad Rupperger spoke on a video that one of the brutal sessions he had with um, exorcism ministry was the man got a tattoo of St. Michael the Archangel and that's how he became possessed with the demons. So, I mean, it sounds sometimes it's a bit extreme when we think of how many people, even our family and friends, that might have tattoos. But then again, how many are going to be celebrating Halloween as they do every year, kids and adults? It seems to be more of a party thing as well now. They're making much right. of a bigger deal of Halloween here in the UK, where I would say we're caught up with America. Because I was in America 20 years ago, and the amount of, it was around about this time where they were getting prepared for Halloween, and it just blew us out the water. It was so much of a big deal. And, um, yeah, we have Christmas, but Halloween's a different thing. Christmas, we're celebrating the life of Christ who came into the world, where light came into the darkness. I remember a priest highlighting in his homily years ago, uh, it was St. Augustine who noticed that a lot of ways to convert the pagans over the Roman Empire when Christianity was growing, the calendar where... John the Baptist, whose feast day is June 24th, and Christmas is December 25th, he must decrease in order for, to cry, for Christ to increase. So the summer solstice is passing, we're getting darker, and then when Christ is born in December, the light comes into the darkness again. So I could see things like that, and other things like the Celtic cross, the symbolism, how that helped pagan Ireland come into Christianity. And with it all going back to those dates, um, and that evolution, surely it's just, there's something about faith there of praying for the dead, or 
trying to communicate with the dead, but there's a difference when we pray for our dead, especially every November. But if people are right. trying to tap into the, the stuff, that's where we start to sound like what we would call today like a cult or right. something like it. Would you say Halloween is a day where a lot of people will, this is their glory day for the occultism or anything like that? Yeah, it's, you know, in, in America especially, um, there's two major police departments, one in Los Angeles and one in New York, and they talk about certain high holy days for Satanists and that they'll find a lot of dead cats or sometimes skinned cats, you know, dead in a dumpster. And same thing with dogs sometimes. And that small children go missing during this time. You know, and it's, they're doing sacrifices to Satan. Um, you know, and it's odd to me that this has been happening for years and years and years. And yet there are people that are in the dark about it. And they've never heard of it. It never, they never turned the page in that newspaper and saw that article. You know, even if they saw the article, they'd skip over it because they either don't believe it or it's too horrific for them to read. Yeah, maybe if you could help us okay. just drop the scales a little bit, if it helps someone get the light bulb effect to say, oh, maybe I should be more careful in what my kids dress up as, or should I just change it all together into dressing up as saints, going to a church community, or even setting one up? That's what we generally recommend is to dress up as saints. I mean, there are saints that are scary. I mean, what about the saint that was beheaded that walked around carrying his head? He's holding onto his head and walking everywhere like that. Or St. Lucy, who has her eyes on a tray. You know, if you could dress up like either one of those, that'd be epic. <laughs> well, I have seen someone do the headless. I think I did it years ago, actually, because I saw someone else doing it a few years before, and I'm like, that was absolutely brilliant. And I did it myself. Um, but yeah, I never thought it would be the saint. So, yeah. That's a very good point. We could still look like the saints at their martyrdom or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. Very good. That's one to remember. That will stay with me. <laughs> well, go, go, go in like, uh, if you're a female, go in something that looks like armor, but all the clothes are singed black and they're burnt. And you can go as... Um, Oh, what was her name? The female saint that was burned at the stake. I said Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc. Yeah. There's so many movies done about her. So burn, use a cigarette lighter and burn the clothes and then put on the armor and put a halo up above you because now you're a saint. Yeah, very and good. <laughs> yeah, very good. I remember in my former community where I was for just over a year, Every month, uh, the Medjugorje message would come out. We would pray all night adoration. And I'm pretty sure, unless it landed on that day, no, it wouldn't have done because it's 31st, but I'm sure when it came to Halloween, we did an all night adoration, a holy hour for anyone in the community to sign up for the hour and go in. And three in the morning was the popular sign-up time where we had to say to people, right, we need to cover two o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. But so many people were wanting to pray at three in the morning and All Hallows' Eve. And like you were saying earlier about we, many people believed that there was going to be so much satanic activity of this night of all night, of all nights. Is that true? Yeah, there is, there is quite a bit. and. Wiccans here in America said that the days leading up to Halloween, they go through grocery stores and bless all the candy. Well, uh, a blessing from a witch is really a curse. Right. And we had um, uh, yesterday in Atlanta, Georgia, there was a black mass. And the same day there was one held in France. Right, okay. Usually when they do two at the same time, there's significance to that. 
Like I don't know what there's, there's what. Say that last part again, sorry. Uh, there's usually significance if you're holding two black masses at the same time. Like for when December 31st came last year, there was a black mass held somewhere here in the United States, and it corresponded to one that was happening in Brazil. They did it at the same time, and it was to welcome the Antichrist. Mm. And your experience of that past life um, as High Wizard and things, I mean, would you say this is the stuff that all this would be part of, or is, are these independent Church of Satan's or independent covens that are so big, or is it all intertwined? Uh, some of it is intertwined. Um, a lot of it is members of my old coven, but they're the fringe members. They're the one. They, they're not embraced by the the core group. The core group doesn't kill animals and small children, but my both covens did human trafficking and they both did child trafficking, and they both did child prostitution and child pornography. But they didn't kill animals, and they didn't kill small children just for the sake of Halloween and doing a, a sacrifice. But some of these people do, and they think that this is what Satan wants. He wants the sacrifice of an animal, or he really wants the sacrifice of a child. And yeah, he's into those things, but he would rather have an aborted fetus than a live baby that's murdered. And uh, I know you covered quite a bit of those details in the previous videos on the channel. Um, but yeah, so there's definitely horrible things going to be happening in All Hallows' Eve with things like that then. Whether it's wickers in a little group or whether if it's something further down the line, like you just mentioned, they seem to make it for Halloween. Well, there are people that think that they can guess what Satan wants. You know, it's Halloween, it's supposed to be a scary... There was a guy in America, his name was Jack Chick, and he was Protestant, and he wrote um, these uh, pamphlets that looked like miniature comic books. And he would tell about um, Satan and a lot of things that were wrong and some things that were right. And he talked about uh, the Catholic Church being the whore of Babylon. And, you know, we're, we're the great Satan. And uh, we're, we're nothing but evil. And we worship the devil. And he said that Halloween was Satan's birthday. It's like, so you're telling me that Halloween didn't start but in the last, like, 500 years. And Satan's only 500 years old? Because that's not what I remember. It's not what I was taught in the Bible. It's like, did you not read that the dragon was kicked out of heaven, like, before we had anybody on Earth? You know, and yet Satan's birthday is Halloween. How is that possible? Just maybe making the part or the connection that all the things that are going on that we're, we're mentioning just now. But yeah, you're correct. He's a, it's an ancient enemy long before we were here. That's for sure. Right. But the fact that these black masses are happening, I mean, the, I think I actually picked up one of the exorcist priests mentioning about it and why we should be outraged. And we should show that outrage. Um, I don't really know how to go. Well, but, but I, I, I agree that we should show the outrage, but you have to pick and choose your battles. Most bishops will tell you, don't come to the Black Mass. Don't come and protest it. Go to adoration and pray prayers of reparation. Now, I agree with that. I mean, how strong... If I'm out at the Satanic Temple protesting the Black Mass, God is somewhere... I mean, they say the spirit of God is everywhere, but he's not 
at the Satanic Temple's Black Mass. If I go to adoration, I'm right in front of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I can tell Jesus how I feel about what's happening. And Jesus can do something about it. But he can't do something about it if he's not there, per se. I know he's God and he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. But you can't. If the, if the bishop is telling you not to go, then you need to not go. Because if you decide you know more than the bishop, then you're not under the umbrella of protection of the bishop, and thus you're not under the umbrella of protection of the church. Yeah. And it goes back to the authority structure as well that we we'll keep getting taught right. with the likes of Father Rippergur and other exorcist priests. And I, I had uh, Kyle Clement on just a couple of weeks ago. He assists Father Rippergur. That's kind of why I mention him a little bit just now, because I think what they're doing is, is amazing work, and I love listening to all the teach. But he says that. He says men have got this um, since the fall as part of our broken nature where we want to go out there and do those battles. We want to go out there elsewhere where we have no business to be. And the fact that our authority... Our authority is in our homes and what we can pray for ourselves and for right. those that we've been given authority over, such as wife, kids, etc. But um, And people like to think that they anything that they can say, they have authority over. Mm. You know, like, um, there are people that think that they could do a deliverance of your house. If you just give me permission to go in there, I can deliver all your demons. It's like, really? And you're a priest? No. You have the authority of the bishop? No. What authority do you have? You know, I have I have Protestants that go to my, my conferences, and they'll stand up and tell me, and I know they're not Catholic when they say this, anybody can do an exorcism. It's like, well, anybody that's a priest that's been ordained by the bishop and the bishop has chosen him to be their exorcist, and they've gotten permission for this particular exorcism, that person can do exorcism. You know, and this guy was standing there telling me he's allowed to do exorcism. Anybody can do it. Jesus did them in the Bible. I said, you know, Jesus was God, right? He's like, well, yeah. I said, how come you're not fighting to do everything that Jesus did in the Bible? How come it's just exorcism? You know, and he's like, well, like what? And at this particular conference, we had this giant lake behind the, the chapel. And I said, why don't you walk across that lake? You walk across that lake, I'll give you permission to do exorcism. So he looks out there and he sees the lake and he sits back down. Then hours later, we're doing, we've done another talk and another Q&A. And somebody yelled, hey, that guy that talked to you earlier is standing out there in the lake. So everybody runs and looks. He's knee deep in the water, his pants rolled up, and he's trying to walk on the water, and he's failing. God loves a trier. <laughs> you know, he put forth his, his best foot forward and sunk. Well, that's why the knowledge comes in, because I think if we look into it deeper into ourselves, I remember getting cable TV for the first time as a young boy. All these Christian channels were on, and it was all this positive reinforcement, all this type of faith. Walk in water, cast out the demons, go out there and preach in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will be with you. And then you turn on the Catholic channel, EWTN. We gotta love God, we gotta love one another. <laughs> it was so boring. <laughs> and of course you're going to be attracted to all this other stuff. But it's when you get into the treasure of the Catholic faith and the whole history of it, you realise, right, get rid of the ego, get rid of the pride, and become a realistic person and realise mm. there, are, there are up and downs in life and God might not be calling you to all these wonderful things. He might do right. it once, he might do it a hundred times, but it's God's will, not ours. Um... There was worry that there might have been a Eucharistic sacrilege going on at those black masses. Is that something that happens a lot? 
Yeah, they steal a consecrated host. They usually send somebody in that's satanic friendly to take the host, and then that person sells it to the satanic temple. And they'll sell it anywhere from $1,500 to $15,000. A good median price is about five grand. Was that, I know it's not something we touched on before in the videos, but was that something, even though you came from the Baptist uh, church side of things, was that type of things that you knew of or witnessed when you were part of it all? I, I went to two black masses, and the first one I had my handler, which is the guy that brings me my sin, he came with me to explain what was going on. And eventually they pulled out this thing. It looked like a vanilla wafer. And I was like, what's that? And I'm pretty far away. And he goes, uh, some people believe that's God. And I was like, oh, vanilla wafers are good, but I wouldn't go that far. And um, I said, oh, yeah, in the Baptist church, we do a remembrance ceremony every three months. And if you're Baptist, you can partake. And in this little square that tastes terrible, unleavened bread, and then a thimble of grape juice. And um, it was yeah, it's, it's similar to that. But they took this thing, threw it around the room. Some guy did a, an elbow on it, like dropped an elbow. Somebody else punted it. And then a woman lifted up her black robe. And she was nude underneath it. And she inserted it into her vagina. And then she threw it to somebody else. And he threw it in a fire. And I'm thinking, it's the weirdest activity I've ever seen. Why would you do that to a, a cookie, basically? That doesn't make any sense. You're like abusing this cookie like it's a person. But obviously it's not. Now, I didn't know what it was. Had they said it was a Eucharist, I wouldn't have known what that is. Right. I just knew that we did a remembrance ceremony in the Baptist church. That's not consecrated. I mean, if Satanists had run in, grabbed the Saborum, and took off running with it, the only thing the Baptist Church would care about is their Saborum. True, yeah. But, I mean, was it from these different churches that they took it, or was it always the Catholic Church they wanted it from? Yeah, it's always it's only the Catholic Church. Yeah. I mean, I know that as a Catholic, it's what we believe, but they wouldn't go to other churches where they just do it as a memorial in the corner. They want the consecrated host from the Catholic Church. Is that right? Yes. I mean, they can tell a consecrated host because they feel extreme hatred or revulsion or sickness when they get close to it. Like, I was on a Protestant show, and I said... Let me give you an idea, a way to make money. And first of all, you have to take lying off the table. So let's say this isn't a lie. What would stop you from going to a Catholic bookstore, buying a box of 100 unconsecrated hosts, and buying a nice Saborum, say a $400 Saborum, putting those unconsecrated hosts in the Saborum, and then take them to the Satanic Temple and say... I know these sell for up to $15,000 each. I've got a hundred of them and I'll sell them to you for a hundred thousand dollars. You're saving $1.4 million. What's to stop you from doing that? Mm -hmm. And, and the Protestant didn't know. And I said, they could open up the suborum, stick their hand in it and realize they don't feel sickness or revulsion or anger. And these con these hosts have not been consecrated. You're lying to them. Because uh, I remember someone saying years ago, again, I was naive in many ways, not thinking the world was made up of people like that. And um, it was like they were saying, well, if, you, if Satanists know that the Eucharist is the true presence of Christ, if it truly is what we believe it to be, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, then if you put down a hundred Eucharistic hosts they would know exactly which one was consecrated if it was only one out of right. But someone then says, but you actually have to think where the possibility of the good is in that because they might, this Satanists might have stronger faith than many Catholics. Was it not a 2019 
study it came out something like 70% of Catholics in America at least don't believe in the true presence in the Eucharist. The, the current study says 15% do believe. 15. But yet more Satanists would believe than Catholics. Satanists would, well, Satanists don't believe in the true presence of God. They believe that this one has been consecrated. So they bless stuff. So this is like, to them, it'd be like a satanic blessing. We blessed it. They don't recognize that it's the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. They recognize that Catholics bless this piece of bread. And opposed to, they didn't bless these other 99. Right, right. But then if they don't truly believe it as a way I thought they might believe in it, if it's just a consecrated bread from the Catholic Church, would they not just be the same as going to any other church for the wafers or the bread? They don't bless it. Ah, it's back to the blessing. Right, okay. Right. Try to work out why the Catholic Church then, unless they believe it, so it's the consecration, the blessing. I, I asked the Protestant show that I was on, why do they only steal the Catholic, you know, consecrated host? How come they don't steal the Baptist wonder bread? You know, and they're like, we don't know. I was like, well, they don't because we believe it's Jesus and Satan knows it's Jesus. Yeah. It's like they just need the Damascus experience. They need the light bulb effect. They're almost there. And it's like, it why, why a, did you watch the video that shows a donkey brought into a barn and he's got, he hasn't eaten for like two days. He's starving and there's a bale of hay in there and he wants that bale of hay. But then somebody puts, I don't know if they put the monstrance or they put the pigs, but they put the Eucharist was there and the donkey sees the Eucharist and he sees the bale of hay and he genuflected to the, to the Eucharist. Right, right. And as long as they kept the Eucharist there, he wouldn't eat the hay. <laughs> he just would have to be God. And then eventually somebody took the host away and he tore into the hay. And he ate. I remember reading a similar story. It was a, some saint had the Eucharist and the bull genuflected before it or something. I remember hearing stories like that. It was like, so the Satanists and Satan himself recommend recognize the host as Jesus. Only 15% of the Catholics do. None of the Protestants do. Like, that should say something. I mean, animals recognize God, and we don't. Speaking of that, I think this is in a similar vein. Um, in the 11th century, there was a Saint Damien. He was an exorcist. And he would... You know, when the demon manifested, he would bind it and make it answer questions. And the demon told him that they cannot make anybody sin, but they can tempt you with the sin and they can lead you all the way up to the sin, but they can't make you sin, but they can tempt you really hard. However, and there was a homosexual scandal going through the church at that time. What a shock. And... If they lead you to that sin and you are so tempted that you're about to do it, when demons lead you to sin and you do sin, they dance with glee because now you're no longer in your state of grace. And if they can get you to die right now, you're going to hell. However, when they tempt you for homosexuality and you do the homosexual act, they are so disgusted by it, they can't watch. They know why sex was created. They know that sex is a beautiful act and it brings forth life. And gay sex does not. And when homosexual sex happens, the demon is so disgusted by it that he has to look away. And I'm like, that's very telling. Yeah. Because porn is the biggest industry in this country. And gay porn is huge. And obviously, if people are watching gay porn, they're watching something that is so vile, demons can't watch it. Yeah. And yet they're so desensitized. I think that also, I, I think I might have heard it quoted from 
St. Catherine of Siena, maybe, about how they, they, they tempt you, they get disgusted by the act. I think it might have been, I heard that quoted or attributed to St. Catherine about that. Um, yeah, I know we're covering a couple other topics there, but just to round up for the Halloween side of things, you're not overly protective about it as long as it's done in a more Christian way. Yeah, if you can do it in a Christian way, it's a fairly safe event. I would also try and control the candy that you're you're letting your kids have. Like at my house, we're not going trick-or-treating. Um, we're doing two church functions where they do trunk or treat, mm-hmm. where they put candy in the, the boot or the trunk of the car, and uh, then the kids go by in their costumes in the parking lot, and parents open up their trunks and, and give candy to the kids. You know, and that way I'm not taking them to a random house that I don't know yeah. and possibly getting fentanyl-laced candy. Um, also, we're giving away candy on our front porch. You know, and if no one decides to come to our neighborhood and take candy, more candy for us. <laughs> but we know it's safe, as you know. And, and then, you know, obviously teach your children to, do, to bless their own food. You know, because anybody that prayed over the candy, like a witch praying over it to give it a blessing to protect yourself. You just need to do the sign of the cross and do the food blessing. Yeah. Prayer before meals, bless the food Lord, you know, right. Cancels it all out. You know, I, I can't believe how many people don't do that prayer, you know, and, and they go everywhere. You know, fast food restaurants are notorious for having Satanists work there. Really? We have a we have a subway restaurant here that has a guy in it that wears um, a pentagram. Right. I don't know if it's inverted or regular pentagram, but he wears that. And I told my wife, I said, ask him what it is. Ask him what it means. I said, they're very, they'll be very open about it. If they're willing to wear it out in public, they'll answer your questions about it. And don't attack him with the question. You know, don't, don't, don't be snarky about it. You're like, what is that you're wearing? No, just ask. Hey, I noticed your necklace. What is that? I'll just freely tell you. Yeah, I'll just freely tell you. When I was in, um, I used to shop at Whole Foods, and I was in Sarasota, Florida. And one day I was looking at this message board sign. It's a cork board. It has business cards on it. And I was looking at it to see if I could use one of those cards. You know, see if it's somebody that I need to know. And I happened to look into the produce section of the store. And in the produce section was a witch. White hat with the point on top. And then the white dress that goes all the way down to her feet. And I was like, what the hell? So I'm angry, but I don't want to approach him now. So I wait for a different day. Now, at this time, I had dreadlocks. I wore a lot of tie-dye. So I walk into the produce section wearing all my tie-dye, my dreadlocks sling bag and i was like hey dude when i buy vegetables here do i need to when i get them home do i need to bless them or have they already been pre-blessed and he goes oh we have a witch that comes in on delivery days and she blesses all the produce and all the seafood because they come in on the same day and i was like thanks you know smiling about it happy to know now i can bless myself but, you know, if I'd have approached him in an angry way, he'd have probably never told me that that happens. There's also like, food in Whole Foods that tell you on the, on the label. It says, blessed by a shaman, blessed by a Reiki master, uh, blessed by love and light, which means a Wiccan blessing. You know, and you, you just need to know that so you can have it blessed. And you might want to have it blessed by a priest. Or you might think that your blessing is good enough. This is on the food labels, did you say? Yes. I never know that. I'll keep an eye out. But do you think the way that that is where you're living, it's as prevalent as any other country, including, you know, the UK, European countries? Do you think this is the same everywhere? Well, we're freer with a lot of things because of freedom of speech and people that like buying witchcraft products 
would like to see those things on labels. So, you know, that, that stuff is sold here with those, on, with those messages on the labels. I don't know how other countries feel about labeling their products like that. And Whole Foods is probably only in America. I'm just trying to get my head. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm completely closed off to it now in recent years, but this alternative way of life with so many people living it, and they could be our neighbours, they could be our politicians, our doctors and nurses, our school teachers. I mean, a lot of the stuff you opened my eyes up to on the previous interview, it's like, I mean, is this so real that you almost can't believe it? Right. And there's, um, I, in a previous interview, I was saying that they tried to legalize pedophilia in France in 2014. And it's like, who brought that before the people for a vote? Mm -hmm. Is that person still in a position of power? You know, because the people of France said no. But they didn't say hell no, they just said no. You know, and it was like, so if we waited 10 years and brought it before a vote, it might pass next time? I mean, wh where is it okay to have sex with children? It, 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 to me, nowhere. You know, but then you have organizations like NAMBLA. Are you familiar with NAMBLA? No, it doesn't ring a bell. No. I think it's only an American thing. It's um, N-A-M-B-L-A. North American Man Boy Love Association. Their slogan is Sex Before Eight or It's Too Late. My days. And then we have uh, rainbow flags that have maps on it M A P S. That's Minor Attracted Persons. So it's a pedophile flag. For gay people. And those are acceptable. That's in New York, in Times Square. They have rainbow flags everywhere. And my friend calls them the abortion flags because at every abortion event, you see rainbow flags. And, you know, they have one that says maps. You know, and he told me about, my friend told me about the maps flag. I was like, I have no idea what that is. All I know is Google Maps. And he goes, yo, I bet they're sorry they're named there. Their company that um, it's minor attracted persons it's a pedophile flag. Yeah, I think we've been so desensitized the past twenty years or so that I can recall it, because I would say the first half of my life you never really heard of any of this. It wasn't on TV. It wasn't something at school. Anything like that at all. Then the second half of my life, that's when everything started changing. And I'm going back a good 20 years ago now, and it was, you know, bringing in gay civil unions, then it was gay adoption, then it was gay marriage, then it was um, LGBT, LGBTQ, then add on the I, add on the A, then it's the transgenderism now. And we're just becoming desensitised and desensitised to the point where are we going to be worried if it's going to be the kids next? Some people are already marrying their dogs in some areas of the world. And it's going well, there was a guy in Canada, I think, he married his laptop. Oh, that's crazy. Because he says he's had better sex with his laptop than he has with any woman in his past. Crazy. I mean, like, who gave permission for that? Yeah. But in, in Canada in 2015, they legalized bestiality. Well, as legalized in Canada? Yeah. Right. Justin Trudeau has some issues. Yeah. Also, I think last year I heard that he was dating somebody in the, like the, the leader of France. And Justin Trudeau is married to a woman, but he apparently is now gay. And he was dating whoever the leader of France is. Emmanuel Macron. 
Well, I've yeah. Well, I've seen some videos, and I, again, you don't know if it's just people making up stuff to get views on the, the videos, little reels, you know, YouTube shorts or Instagram shorts and reels, things like that. And I don't go looking for it at all. It just seems to be what pops up. And um, there seem to be a lot of videos on Michelle Obama, and um, they get clips of President Obama speaking about Michael uh, rather right. than Michelle, and then there's videos you see down below. Things are moving when she's dancing in one of these videos, and then <laughs> uh, and you see people looking as if to point it out, and then they're like saying they they're they're insinuating the same thing about President Macron's wife. So, what's the chances the two presidents part of the G8 have transsexual? Wives, I don't know, but um, I don't know why they they two seem to get the the ones popping up about it. Uh, but there was a famous celebrity, I don't know her name, I don't know Joan Rivers or if I'm making that up. But there's a video where she says, "Yeah, we all know Michael and Michelle, you know Obama, and um, used to be a man, but it's okay, we support them and all the rest of it." And but it's never came to mainstream news. It's all on the YouTube or Instagram shorts and things like that, but um, the other thing I would say while we were talking about France a few times now is when you we saw the Olympics opening ceremony, um, right. and we're starting to see that type of thing like at Eurovision, that was very much not just the sexualization and the homosexual promotions and things, but the Irish singer did, I mean she makes it out, she's a witch, her dance partner on the duo set is, is dressed with the horns, the teeth, the, the pointy beard. She's doing the pentagram on the stage with the candles. And then we get the Olympic opening ceremony in Paris. And I know Father Ripperger spoke up about the one in Switzerland a while back with opening up the tunnel, with all yeah. the heads and all this stuff. And it seems to be they're not hiding it anymore. It right. just, it's just coming more and more and more where, again, is it just because we're desensitised? Those of the faith, Catholic, Christian faith, were just so fallen into the way of being quiet and timid that we just don't do nothing about it, and that's why it happens. I mean, when you see that now, it's like, well, from your past life and what you were involved in, is there a goal that they're trying to reach with all this? Is there a day of... If they're doing these black masses calling in for the Antichrist or the reign of Satan, are they waiting for a, a time where they believe something like this will happen? Like there'll be his kingdom on earth? or so? I mean, why are they doing it? Is it just something that's going to continue forever because they like to be rebellious? Well, eventually the New World Order will take over. And I think by the time it takes over, it's kind of like Nazi Germany. You know, eventually they, they came and took you know, these people away, but it didn't affect me. And then they took these other people away, and but it didn't affect me. And it kept taking these other people and these other people. And it didn't mean anything to the people until the Germans came for them. And then they realized, oh, something's happening, and they can't get help because everybody else is already gone. Um, I think, you know, did you see the movie Nefarious? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm aware of it, and I know the Exorcists say that's the best one to watch than all the other Hollywood-produced ones. It's more closer to it. Yeah, the, the guy in it says that possession doesn't happen all at once. It's a series of small yeses. It's a series of small sins that lead you up to the big one. By the time you get to possession... You've already said yes to this other thousand questions. And this one more step is just one more step. It's not a major step. It's not you're crossing the chasm of the Grand Canyon. You know, you're just taking one more step. And then you take that one more step because you've already taken the previous 1,000. And then you're possessed. And you wonder how you got there. Well, you got there with a thousand yeses before you got to this point. You know, Satan 
has been playing this game for a long time, and he knows what doesn't work, and he knows what does. And he sticks to what works. Yeah. Well, I definitely. You know, do. Yeah, please go. Leading up to me selling my soul, I wouldn't have sold it had you brought up a, a report on the first day and said, slice your thumb, bleed onto this document, and sign it in your own blood in three places. On the final page, you're going to sell your soul to the devil. You know, I'd have ran away. But he got me smoking cigarettes, cigars, pipes, weed, popping pills, um, taking acid, taking MDMA, taking uppers and downers and cocaine, and then having sex with a bunch of people and then being filmed and then have people write in from all over the world wanting to see me in sex positions with a certain girl. And also drinking a lot. And after he's got me having sex, drinking, you know, boozing it up, taking drugs, and after I'm doing everything under the sun that I want to do, then they're like, would you like to be a Satanist? You know, and at that point, when I know everything that I've got going for me, I know that I'm 18, you got to be 18 to buy porn. I'm still 12. You'll be 19 to buy tobacco. I'm still 12. I'll be 21 to buy booze. I'm still 12. If I quit this place, I'm a star. I'm a movie star in porn. If I quit this place, I'm going to lose all my porn, all my drugs, all my smokables. I'm going to lose everything. I don't want to lose any of that. I'm addicted to everything. So yes, absolutely, I'll sign. It's a series of small yeses that get you to that final point. You know, 10,000 10, yeses later, I'm signing my soul away to Satan, not thinking anything about it. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And that's, again, what Kyle Clement was saying on the show was, you know, the psychological compatibility you know, we get so far of the temptation, but it's our act of will if we do the temptation or not. And the devil along's just whispering. But I think the more yeses we do and we fall into the temptation, the more desensitized we become to what's right or wrong. But at the same time, that's how it gets in. Yes after yes, a little bit more, a little bit more, to the point where the possession's there or the oppression or the emptiness, maybe, even, of one person's uh, self. But you remind me... Yeah, go for it. My people that come to my conferences, they're like, didn't you know the difference in right and wrong? No. I mean, you, you start off knowing the difference in right and wrong, but eventually those lines are blurred, and they're gray now. It used to be black and white. But now it's like I don't I don't know that that's definitely right or wrong. True, and it might bridge us into just this last part, maybe picking up on what we're seeing again in this realistic world of what's real and what's not. Is it just people making up nonsense on videos, or are they making up a good point that the mainstream are trying to silence? Because when you speak about this, yes after yes, little after little. There was a video that popped up in the shorts and it was going back to like the Jeffrey Epstein Island and all the people that have been going there from presidents to CEOs and all stuff, uh, people. And it was like the scene from Pinocchio where he says, we're taking all these bad boys to Pleasure Island and we're going to get them, in, you know, and they're, they're drinking, they're smoking and all these naughty mm -hmm. And again, it goes back to someone else highlighting how Walt Disney, it was always about the orphan child, the wicked stepmother, and anything if a father figure was ever about in any of these movies, it's always someone who's weak, a buffoon, the comedy act. All this right. is getting programmed and designed, but this Pleasure Island thing, and then we think of everything that's happened, there's so much apparently that's not getting released because of who's all involved. And... Um, 
is that Corey? I forget his name. He played Mouth Boy in the Goonies. He came out with his own private documentary name, and I think it was Charlie Sheen who abused his friend. What was his name? Phoenix at Diet River Phoenix. And it was going back, going back to then with all that stuff. But so many people now, especially since P. Diddy, Sean Combs, has been arrested, there's talks about his human trafficking, his child right. trafficking, it's all these famous white parties where they're all in white, and it's all the celebrities that we would think of, from music stars to Hollywood actors. And... Um, it's not even scratching the surface, but since we spoke seven months ago and you gave great detail in the other video about how people come to you wanting fame and fortune as the high wizard, yeah. how it all gets set up and things, all these videos are starting to pop up just in the last six months, and now the FBI yeah. make these arrests, and it came just after that movie, Sound of Freedom, it was all about the yeah. child trafficking and this America with no border, and even that man who the movie was about, he's saying these kids want the border because they get to the border with a number, it's the paedophile acting out that's family member, and that's where they're sent. How much of this is all part of the satanic covens? Are we, ta are we really saying that some or a lot of politicians, the celebrities who are kids, have posters of on their walls, want to go to their concerts, buying their records, whatever, watching their movies. How how real is it, or is it not that bad we don't need to worry about? If you watch, there's a lot of documentaries, uh, some of them on Netflix and some on Hulu, about boys that were in different TV shows, shows that I'm sure I watch most of them, and a lot of those boys were sexually assaulted by other members of the, the stage crew or of other actors on the show. And it's very prevalent in almost every show that has children that somebody on that show is being sexually abused. And that's commonplace because think of how many shows there are. And that's hundreds of children, if not thousands. You know, and there's constant children being abused, boys and girls. And whenever it breaks, it's a scandal. And then after a couple of months, the story's gone. No one knows anything about it. There was a case in Toronto, Canada. It was a few years ago, maybe like 12 years ago, something like that. And there were these, uh, there was a raid done and they arrested 200 pedophiles and rescued over 200 children. And it was revealed in the article that it was a satanic pedophile gang involved in child prostitution and child pornography. That story was in the newspaper for one day. And the next day, you couldn't find it anywhere. You search the internet, it's not there. And it's like, and that was a satanic pedophile gang. You know, it made it into the news and then disappeared. And every time a story like that pops up and Satan's name is attached to it, it lasts for one day. And then it's gone and you never read it again. Yeah, people in high positions making it disappear probably. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised that it actually makes it into the newspaper to begin with. Right, right. But how prevalent is it? And to, what I'm trying to get at is, like, from your past experience as High Wizard and things, because I think, although we get a lot out on our original interview, I've since spoken to Christine Watkins, who was promoting our book, The Miraculous Medal, which, of course, you've got a great story about. But there was extra parts that you gave, which is now public knowledge anyway. But how much is it with these politicians and celebrities that... Are we really talking a lot of them are really controlling the government or the Hollywood scene in terms of this satanic elite? Bohemian Grove is there, and it's been there for a long time. Um, that's all the world's elites in politics are the ones that show up. And it's about 2,000 people. 
Now, in the big scheme of things, out of we have almost 9 billion people in the world now, 2,000 is nothing. But it's 2,000, a large percentage of them are billionaires. And they get their way. They get whatever they want. You know, they're working towards the new world order. You know, between them and the Bilderberg Society, you know, the Bilderberg Group is fairly large as well. And these are billionaires as well. And, you know, okay, to give you an example of how a small percentage controls a bigger percentage, in America, according to, I think it was the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, they did a survey of what percentage of the United States is homosexual. Point zero eight percent. So less than 1% of the United States is gay. Under 1%. And they get gay marriage. They get gay rights, gay law. They're protected under every single protection they can be. They have more rights than I have. Now they said they were just going for equal treatment, but now they get better treatment. They can get anything they want. And if you discriminate against them for any reason, and you could have a legitimate reason, they'll claim it's you're homophobic, and then you get sued into the ground. And the reason you may be keeping them out may not have anything to do with them being gay. You know, not even straight people wanted to be married, and they fought for that. And our country decided that they knew better than God knew. I'm thinking our judgment is going to be swift, and it's going to be brutal, and it's going to be violent. And we have nobody to blame but ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Well, I th just to wrap things up then, it's like... The way some exorcist have says they know when it's the when liberation is near and the person of the possessed, the liberation's near because the demons become more frantic, become more violent, become louder, because they know they're ready to be cast out when God decides. Right. They know when it's coming, and that's the reason for their worse behaviour. And I think when you look at that in society, that's what's happening. It's beginning to the point where those of no faith must be losing hope. We can see the depression. We can see everything, like you say, everything that's on the TV is for less than 1% of the population. But over 99% of us have to abide. And then everything else that's going on. And um, I, I think and on this channel, the many Catholic prophecies and things that are unfolding before us right now, with geographical areas, the wars the number of popes, the timing of the popes, all this stuff. Our Lady is, um, is ready to crush the serpent, basically. I think he's tiny. In, they know the time's short. They know, they're getting more frantic. They're trying to bring in this stuff more violently, more quicker, because the time's short and God's ready to pull the plug. I mean, would you agree with that? Yes. That's why we need to keep the hope. <laughs> It's making a choice, isn't it? It's like, I think, again, it was Father Ripperger it says, and I think I saw an interview with Father Altman used it as an example. There's some people that are just, they just don't want to be good. They want to be evil. They want to continue being evil. Right. They want to, And I don't know, who, I think it might have been Father Altman speaking about a reporter. She went down to Mexico to check out all this child trafficking and things like that. And she starts interviewing some of these men involved. But the reason they're doing it is because they're Satanists. They admit it. And the fact that they've offered up everything for Satanism, they just choose to keep doing evil because they hate God so much. How do you get well, those that? Are the people, those are the people that hell was created for. If you've rejected God your entire life, then it would be hell for you to be put in heaven in his presence. So he gives you hell because he's not there. 
it, it's a relief and a mercy to the person that goes. Until they get there and then they realize it was all been a waste because Satan hates them as well. Right. Anything. <laughs> oh, it's crazy to think that psychology could be in some people and they just choose to be that way. It's very hard some people to. Are more comfortable. Some people are more comfortable doing that. You know, they've always been the bad guy, so why stop now? And you think the matter, I mean, it would need to take divine intervention, maybe as it was for yourself when the Lord came and his mother came, but the only thing to beat that hatred is love, infinite love of God, right. isn't it? There was a uh, priest, I think, in Africa that rescued a bunch of children from human being trafficked, and he said he was able to heal them by bringing them in front of the Blessed Sacrament every day and keeping them there for hours. And they love that. They love being in the presence of God. And God not only healed them, but took their bad memories away from what they used to do. Because mm. it's very easy to blame God. Why did you allow this to happen to me? Why are you allowing this to happen to so many children? Why don't you just come and cast the demons out or end the lives of those doing it if they don't want to change? These are big questions. Those are good questions, but God allows us to operate under our free will. And he wants to give everybody, even the bad people, as many chances as possible to turn to him. And if he kills them all, all at once... What if one of them was one step away from converting? And now we'll never know because now he's in hell. Mm. And do you think things are going to start crumbling now? I mean, we're saying the demons are more frantic because they know their time's running short. Do you think all those people in Hollywood, the music industry, governments, billionaires, whoever... Do you think the light's about to come over the darkness and they're about to be exposed? Is this what you think might be? I'm starting to wonder if that's what's the beginning of these arrests and things that are happening just now. I'm thinking that we're, we're due for the warning. You know, for the warning to take place and suddenly everybody sees where they would go if they died right now. Mm. And that's going to bring a lot of people into the church. And have a lot of Satanists converting because they're going to realize... Hell's a real place, and that's where they're headed. Right, right. It's, it's not a, it's not a, a, a glorious, happy place. You know, hell is not Disneyland. Yeah. I think we're definitely coming soon. Sometimes I wonder if it's within the year or two, or if it's closer to the twenty thirty, because the Great Reset, you know, World Economic Forum, you're your elites and all this stuff, but the divine reset is what we're after. And again, I think, yeah, go for I it. I think we're very close, but I think we're also very close to a nuclear war and to America being nuked. And it depends on who our president is. You know, we have one president that will stand up for us and one president that will hand us over to the communists. <laughs> yes. For sure. You know, and the one president we have now is embracing Satanism. But there was a, a horrible, there has been two horrible hurricanes hit the United States so far. And somebody asked President Biden, are you praying and fasting for the people that got hit by the hurricane? And he said, I don't pray and I don't fast. You're Catholic. How can you not do those things? But he'll show his rosary beads on the interview, making it look good. It was like that's what we do. We pray and fast, yeah. you know. And he's like, I don't pray and I don't fast, you know. And then he's got a cabinet member that's a known Satanist. And when you see that guy on television all the time, wearing satanic jewelry and t-shirts and tattoos. All right, I wasn't aware of that. I don't know what. I thought he was the, the monkeypox czar, 
but I think he's been moved into a different position. And I don't I don't know what he does, but I know he's on camera a lot in the White House, and he's got all this satanic paraphernalia all over him. Mm -hmm. And he owns a satanic gym, a gay satanic gym. No, if you find out who is, let us know, and I'll get a name up on the screen. Maybe if you can let us find it out. Any? Uh, not the now. Uh, any time. Any time. The um, gay Satanist that works for Biden. I I don't know his name, but I know what he is. But uh, he used to steal suitcases in, <laughs> in airports, and I think he got fired for that. Yeah. Oh, she said he used to steal suitcases in airports, and he got fired for that. <laughs> steal a suitcase in an airport? Come work for Joe Biden. Bro, oh, yeah. That was crazy stuff. I, I was hoping to wrap up there, uh, Zachary. I, you just reminded me when you said something a moment ago, and if, maybe just for the last story, I might keep it separate, but... The original video, you started telling me a story with Harry Potter and that, but I never hit the record button at the time, so no one ever got to see it. But the good thing I'm noticing is J.K. Rowling is taking a stance against the grain, which is a good thing. But see, just for five minutes, if you have, could you just tell us the Harry Potter story when you were at the shop and things like that, and it's the real spells and things, just for the viewers sure. to be aware? All right, so... There was an interview with J.K. Rowling where she said that she did one third of her research in occult books because she wanted real spells to go in the books. She wanted them to be authentic. Um, she also put out a paper on her website that said that every time she deposited a billion dollar Harry Potter check, she felt guilty because she was lying to people that she believes that the Wiccan church is the one true church and that Gaia is Mother Earth, and she's a goddess, and that she intentionally manipulated the minds of young people to believe magic worked so that they would join the Wiccan movement because the Wiccan movement is a bunch of elderly women that are dying off, and it needs new blood in the church, and she knows the children could do that. Um, me and my niece went to Orlando Mm, probably it was 2018 and we were going to be going down there for a convent interview for her. But since we're going to be in Florida, I said, what theme park do you want to go to? And we'll stay an extra few days. So she wanted to go to universal studios. So we did that. And when we were down there, we took a bag of exercise salt with us and I can walk at that time. But she said it'd be easier if I rode in a wheelchair. Plus, if I rode in a wheelchair, I'd be her Make-A-Wish kid. And every time we got up to a ride, they'd bump us to the front of the line because I'm in a wheelchair. And I'm like, I like how your mind works. So we did that. I'm in a wheelchair. And we got to the Harry Potter area. There's like 3,000 people on the street. And I mean, no one drives on the street pretty much. If, if somebody's driving, it's a golf cart. And so we're walking down the center of the street with 3,000 people we don't know all around us. And I've got the exercise salt in my pants pocket, and I start dropping it on the road where we're walking. After a few minutes, we're not hearing all these people all around us anymore. And I said, stop and turn around. And we stop and turn around. The 3,000 people are now walking on the sidewalks on the edge of the road and back where I started dropping the salt on the road, there's a wall of people standing there that can't advance and they get to there and they can't advance. And then they walk over and they get on the sidewalk and they come down the sidewalk towards us. Everybody's laughing and having a good time, but nobody can walk past that area where the salt is. So then we walk inside one of the Harry Potter stores and it, it's a little store. It has about 20 people in it. It's packed. And there's aisles in there, but they're big enough for my wheelchair. So she pushes me down all the aisles. And I drop exercise salt into the carpet. 
And in about five minutes, the store is empty. It's just me and my niece. And the woman behind the counter is still friendly. And she gets a phone call. And she's like, yes. Yeah, I'll do it when these people leave. Now? Right now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And the person on the other end is like yelling. So she puts the phone down. She goes, uh, I have to vacuum now. You're like, not a problem. So we're still in the store. She starts vacuuming the floor. And as she vacuums the floor, we go behind her and drop more exercise salt. So when she was done vacuuming the floor, there's still nobody coming in there. You know, we thanked her and waved goodbye. And she waved goodbye. And she was all happy and friendly. And we walked out. And nobody was walking in the store, even though there was 20 people in there when we walked in. You know, it was like every place we went that was around Harry Potter, we would put down exercise salt and suddenly people were not going there anymore. Amazing. So, you know, obviously what you're doing, but no one else does. How would right. that woman on the phone yelling know that the, the Hoover had to happen? Like, would she be picking up a sense being a, satanic witch or something or was it on the cameras she's noticed it <laughs> i i don't know i mean there's cameras in the store so i mean it could be that or it could be some demon told her you need to vacuum the floor in the store yeah, yeah. well i think when you've covered again about the spells and the harry potter stuff Again, it's the attraction on the movies and things like that. But would you say we have to be very careful and cautious of what we're getting shown now? Because it's like, once upon a time it was just radio, then it was TV, then it was multiple channels. Now it's internet, TV, radio, everything. Right, it's right. Streaming. You know, I, I heard lots of priests say that, you know, there were, there were teachers and parents that were saying, you know, praise God for Harry Potter because my child wouldn't read before that. You know, and I heard exorcists say that I'd rather your child be illiterate than read Harry Potter. You know, because they're reading witchcraft. You know, in the Bible, if you did magical things in the Old Testament, you were stoned to death. In the New Testament, you don't inherit the kingdom of God. Which would you prefer? <laughs> you know, people would come to my talks and they'd scream at me from the audience that Harry Potter is just a book. And I said, yeah, there's other just books out there too. Let's see how many of these you let your children read. The Quran, Hustler Magazine, Holy Bible. You let your children read all three of those because all three are just books. You know, this woman's like, I would never let my child read Hustler Magazine. Why not? It's just a book. Fair point. Well, the, the Quran isn't isn't a holy book. It, it is to them. It is to the Muslims. And you said it's just a book. You know, so she had to concede that some books were bad, and some were good. And I said, well, now that we're on that page, Harry Potter is bad. It's got real magic in it. I said, how about, I said, would you read a book that God told you not to read? She's like, no. I said, okay. God told you not to steal, and he said it one time. Do you think that's important? She's like, well, yeah. He said, it's in the Ten Commandments, so he said it once. He goes, how about thou shalt not kill? That seems mildly important. She goes, well, yeah, that's important, so you shouldn't kill. I said, all right. Uh, now, those things are mentioned once. Do you think if God mentioned something more than once, then it's really important? She goes, yeah. I said, okay. God says not to do magical things 33 times. But he says, thou shalt not kill one time. Which is more important? Yeah. And I, I could, that triggers more about the 33, the Masonic stuff and all that, you know, from the right. club to the guns left, the bullets left in Top Gun Mavericks uh, jet. People notice that, the 33. 33 is everywhere. But then 13, I saw a video as well. 13 is important, apparently, with masonry or occultism. I don't know if, what you know about that. But then, of course, Our Lady appears in May 13th to October 13th in Fatima. 
It was October 13th. Pope Leo they had had the mystical experience. It was October 13th of the Akita prophecy. It was May 13th that the Pope was shot, which went back to Fatima. And this site that I've got up here, uh, we had up earlier, it speaks about how um, Pope, Pope, where was it? On May 13th, 609, Pope Boniface IV dedicated the Pantheon in Rome in honour of all Christian martyrs. And the Catholic Feast of All Martyrs Day was established in the Western Church. Pope Gregory III later expanded the festival to include all saints as well as all martyrs and moved the observance from May 13th to November 1st. And I just, as soon as I read that before you came on, I was like, oh, May 13th. It's like all these numbers, and again, there's videos out there from Nickelodeon to Google Play that they're all making out as if it's satanic symbols and things like that. Who knows if it's true or not, unless you've got anything to call. <laughs> Satan likes to mock God. You know, so going back to the, you know, you have the witching hour at midnight, you have the devil's hour at 3 a.m. You have divine mercy hour at 3 p.m. You know, there's a lot of Disney movies that have on the address, on like the mailbox or on the house, they have the mathematical formula for adrenochrome. Where it looks like an address, but it's the mathematical formula for adrenochrome. Then they also made a movie about, a cartoon about adrenochrome. So they hit it right in plain sight. Uh, you might have seen the movie. It was called Monsters, Inc. Oh, right. Where the, the, their city powers the lights if they can get kids to scream. You know, an adrenochrome is you sexually torture the child. And while they're at the height of their fear, you withdraw all their blood and adrenaline out of their body. And then billionaires drink that to live longer. Now the, the satanic ones, surely there's not. They're not all satanic, surely. What's that? Just the satanic billionaires. Surely they're not all satanic. Uh, I wouldn't say they're all satanic, but I'd say a good number of them are. Mm -hmm. There's a picture recently that surfaced of Elon Musk and his mother wearing a satanic suit of armor. Right, right. And what do you make of him then? Because he seems to be ostracizing himself from the club because he's promoting Trump and he's calling out right. things. So is he an angel of light disguised or... Or he's on his own world. I don't know. <laughs> I, I would like to think he's the good guy. Yeah. But, you know, my friend recently showed me the picture of him dressed in satanic armor. And I was like, well, yeah, but you don't know. I mean, that's just one snapshot in the man's life. What was the reason for putting on the armor? Yeah. You know, I mean, was there another reason or was this a satanic event? Yeah. But then he's doing the chip implants, isn't he? He wants to do things like this next and all the satellites covering us. It's like the stage is set for the Antichrist, whether he's part of it or not. You know, what a lot of people don't realize, because a lot of people hear Illuminati, Satanism, um, pedophilia, human trafficking, and they think uh, conspiracy theories. But a lot of conspiracy theories are really conspiracy facts. You know, I did a, a conference here in Kansas uh, a couple of years ago, and in it, I talked about, it was my story, but I spent a lot of time talking about human trafficking and child trafficking, child prostitution, and child pornography. And it was a large portion of my talk was that because I was involved in it. And when my talk was over, uh, the people came up to the woman that hosted me and said that, well, we don't really agree with him saying all that stuff about child trafficking because we don't believe in that. We don't believe that's real. And, um, you know, and he talked too much about Mary. 
And they're like, well, he couldn't have given his story without telling you about Mary. You know, Mary showed up at his conversion. So, and they're like, okay, we'll give you that. But the human trafficking thing, we don't believe in that. Fast forward eight months and the sound of freedom came out. And everybody that went to my talk went and saw the sound of freedom and realized I was telling the truth. So then they invited me back. And this time I gave them a talk about Satan and pop culture. You know, in Satan and pop culture, I quote from bands. And then I have people guess what band said this. And people have a very limited scope. Because I, I did a quote. This band said, we literally wrote magic spells into our songs. Into the lyrics and into the music itself. So that when you heard our songs on the radio, you'd have to go to your local record store and buy our merchandise. Or if you saw us in concert, you'd have to buy our merchandise at the show. Or when you got home, you'd have to go to your local record store and buy our merchandise because we literally wrote ma magic spells in our music. And I asked people who said that. And people guess Kiss, ACDC, Ghost, Led Zeppelin. Uh, everybody dark that they can think of. It was the Beach Boys. <laughs> you know, what band, and this is the second thing that I say, what band said that they were going to put out every song, every song they put out is going to be in the philosophy of Aleister Crowley, and they want to influence the world's youth to think like Aleister Crowley. And even one of their singers went so far as to sell his soul to the devil. Who would that have been? I remember hearing about that story, I can't remember. Oh, wait, wait, the Beatles. Beatles, John Lennon. Yes, the Beatles and John Lennon. Uh, Father Ripperger highlighted that, saying it was 20 years he heard, and then 20 years to the week he was shot. John right, Lee. right, almost to the day. Yeah. Was that something that was written? How how did people come to that knowledge? I think it's written in a book. Right, right, okay. Was there not another band that killed a lady years ago and offered up as a satanic ritual or something? It was a boy band, 70s or 80s, if I remember. Something to do. I went through a murder trial or something. I don't know what it was, but apparently it was someone get killed by the, by the band, and it was part of this. There was, there was like a Norwegian death metal band, and they murdered somebody. Right. That would have been probably 30 or 40 years ago. And they went on trial, and I think the guy went to prison for it. Right. Because Again, looking back to all the things you said before and what we're seeing now, it's like they're trying to tear a little bit for us to see but it's this hush-hush stuff, isn't it? P. Diddy to Jeffrey Epstein Island list to whoever might be involved. But they seem to bring... They keep associating Oprah Winfrey on these videos, whether it's true or not. And Ellen's the genre with uh, the pizza. Something to do with the pizza boxes. This is the code. The pizzas. And, pizza yeah, all that stuff. Um, Oprah talks about having a school in Africa and I think she's going to be found out found guilty of human trafficking mm -hmm. I think that's the scandal with her um, and it's funny how many scandals break and people around the world are like I never knew I never thought this never occurred to me and it's like that's because you don't go to my talks you don't listen to my interviews you don't listen to my conferences because I talk about this stuff Right, right. You know, my wife says that the more this stuff comes out on the news, the more legit I sound. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like P. Diddy arrested, and she's like, it's just confirmed stuff that you say. They're not even scratching the surface as well, I don't think. Right. Right. You know, it's like for all the Jeffrey Epstein's you catch, there's 99 you didn't catch. For all the P. Diddy's you catch. You know, you hear about all his parties and the people that are involved. 
and somehow those other people are not getting arrested. And there's like thousands of people that are involved in doing this stuff. You know, when you decide to traffic even one person, you can't traffic one person by yourself. You, you need a ring of people to do this. You know, trafficking is not, it's not a, a quiet enterprise where, you know, if me and you decided to traffic somebody, it's just me and just you involved. I mean, there's got to be dozens of people to move even one person across country. There's got to be people that look the other way or turn a blind eye. They may not be actively hands-on with the person they're trafficking, but they're looking the other way. They're allowing that person to be put in their cargo hold or in their cargo bin or in the, uh, the hull of their ship. You know, they're, they're allowing the person to be put somewhere. Well, that kind of just begs the question, why would any multi-millionaire or billionaire, celebrity, CEO, Hollywood actor, singer, whoever, why would anyone in that successful, wealthy way of life have any business in dealing with anything like that? Well, because some people have a lot of perversions, and a lot of people going to the Philippines is not convenient. Did you know in the Philippines you can rent a person for $25 a day and you can do whatever you want to with them? If you're going to rent them to pick your feels, that's fine. If you're going to rent them to carry your luggage and shine your shoes, that's fine. And if you want to rent them to have sex with them all day, that's fine. $25 a day, you can do whatever you want to with them. All you got to do is go to the Philippines. Uh, rather than the travel, bring them here. Yeah, it's it's easier to buy the person and have them sent here. They're promised a better life. That may or may not be true. And they get to travel. That part is true. They do get to travel, but, you know, they're coming somewhere to be owned by somebody. And then they're under constant threat of being killed. And they're not allowed to talk to anybody. If anybody starts to talk to them, just tell them you don't speak English. And then they work at the house as if they're servant, but it's more like them being a slave. I was shocked that Epstein got away with what he got away with for so long. And then you look at the guest lists. <laughs> well, the, the guest list is crazy. I have never seen the guest list for Epstein's Island. I tell people that have interviewed me, if you see my name, it'll be Tommy with no last name. Because that's how I signed in. So I don't know if Tommy's on the guest list or not. It would be interesting. Yeah, again, I've seen other videos popping up with different names and that, but it's not really for this uh, video anyway. And you need to watch who's watching and hope it doesn't get banned type of thing, you know. But as always, you've, gave, you've given us such a wealth. And I know you're saying you're doing your own seminars and you talk more in detail with this stuff. Where would you tell our viewers to go to, to find any talks or websites or anything like that of yourself? Um, if you go to my channel, allsaintsministry.org, uh, I have a lot of YouTube videos and some interviews up. Um, if you go to Spotify and look up All Saints Ministry and look for a picture of the front and back of a miraculous metal and two candles, I have up over 300 podcasts and, and they go anywhere from a minute and a half to 56 minutes long. I've done over 200 interviews and over 200 conferences. Oof. So, you know, and I've got some good uh, recordings on my own YouTube channel. One of them is called A Good Interview, and that is a really good interview. It's still called All Saints Ministry? Yes. Cool. AllSaintsMinistry.org. 
I'll make sure the links are below in the description box. Zachary, thanks very much for your generous time as always. Uh, it's been great speaking to well, you. And I'm sure people will be taking a lot from this. And hopefully there's an eye-opener, at least in one thing that you've said, that will just help at least one person. So as always, folks, please like, subscribe, share. You know what you need to do to get the word out there. We're doing our part in this spiritual battle for sure. And Zachary, I'm just going to say, if you've got any final words to share, this is your moment if you want to. Um, I think I like to end most of my messages with, you cannot sell what you do not own. You cannot sell your soul. If you think you sold your soul, all you did was give your will to the devil. Even if you signed a contract and agreed to sell your soul to the devil, all you've done is given your will to the devil. You go to confession, you give your will back to God. And you might need a deliverance and you might need an exorcism, but at least you know that you didn't sell your soul. It's impossible to sell. Brilliant. Excellent. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone for tuning in again. Until next time, as always, take care and God bless. God bless you.